Now, progress could be in the eye of the beholder here because there are many people who say, you know, do we need something of this size? Take a look at what happened in the markets and why they were acting the way they were. Uh, up strongly on a jobs report that showed 379,000 more of them in the latest month and the unemployment rate inching down to 6.2%. The feeling seems to be that we're doing a OK and we don't need this type of massive help. David Bonson joins us right now. Joe Biden, when asked that very question, does not seem to fear that happening, that this is almost too stimulative and will, you know, you know, get inflation going. David, what did you make of that? Well, I actually think that it's very unlikely that the White House economic advisors right now even disagree with Larry Summers and some of the others that have thrown water on this. I just think they're in too deep. I think politically right now for them to backtrack from this, it would be really, really devastating. It was very unwise to come out so big. And it was even more unwise to come out with, as, as Danielle said, something that is so shotgun oriented, a rifle would have been really, really effective here. Um, we can disagree as I do about the amount of money they wanna give directly to the states. But this $1,400 issue and, and the way that they're structuring the payment, the direct payments, it's not even stimulative. It's, it's really just silly. And so I think that they're in a position politically that they can't backtrack from. Uh, but, David, uh, uh, you know, I guess it and I kind of tease it this way. It depends on your age group. I mean, for young people um, and the alarm that I heard when, when they heard that mortgage rates were over 3 percent. Um, and I, I like to remind those of another age, let's say me, um, when I was their age and my wife and I were getting our first mortgage, I might have told this story one or two thousand times. It was 13 and a half percent and we thought we were financial geniuses. Now, I know that it was in the day of Ronald Reagan and then it's a whole different world now. But which wins out the perspective that rates are still low, this 30 year fixed mortgage is still lower than it was a year ago at this time, or this notion that it could go still higher. Where are you on this? When it comes to stuff about the Fed, Danielle and I pretty much agree on almost everything, but I kind of disagreed with almost everything she just said. The issue with the 10 year at one and a half percent, and we talk about it tripling from the four seconds that it was at 0.5% a year ago, the 10 year is still less than half of its 20-year average and well less than its 50-year average. And there is no way that stocks are competing with a 1.5% Treasury. The NASDAQ is down well, because it, it way over. assuming it stays at 1.5%, right? That, that's assuming it stays. That's right. There is so some threshold at which bonds three, become... Right? There, there is some threshold, and two and a half, three is exactly where I would think it might be, and we're nowhere near that, and we're not going to be able to uh -huh. get there for the very sad reason that we don't have the organic, real economic growth. The excessive debt and the Fed interventions serve as holding rates down. We're in that debt deflationary cycle, and that's the problem. The NASDAQ was just simply too rich in valuation. It has had to adjust a bit, but we're talking about the, the market being rattled. It's up over a thousand points in the last few weeks. There's been a little bit of intraday volatility this week, but I really think we are substantially overthinking this.